Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Xeno Gears. Uh, we're starting this one off with a bang. We're fighting this big crazy red gear here. I think this is part 11. Um, I hate that I had to cut it off. Notice we didn't do any fucking damage. Oh, we did some damage. So, we can probably beat this guy. Anyways, so... Last episode, we've gotten up to this point. Um, our plans have fallen apart, and now things are just getting worse and worse. Oh, wow, he actually dodged it for once. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus Christ. He did, like, five times my health. <laughs> actually, no, that's almost ten times, isn't it? Yep. So I love that part, I absolutely love that part, and I'm glad we started with that. Um, because they show you through combat how strong that motherfucker is. Which is cool, which is fucking crazy. And um, they're going to show now through cutscenes and stuff even more how strong this crazy guy is. So these guys are like, we're just going to smash the ship into him. Huh. Sorry for the slurping there. Coffee is delicious. I'm once again recording this in the morning here. Wow, my phone just doesn't want to fucking work. No, turn on the do not disturb, asshat. There we go. Okay. I feel like... Xenosaga showed us what this team would do if they had the technology beyond what they had on the PlayStation to really show... <laughs> Bart just fucks off. To really show what's happening. So like here they can't do much with the models and everything like that, so we get stuff like that that looks... Uh, it's cool, but it still looks a little stilted and kind of confusing. Um, Whereas there were like 30 minute long action cutscenes in Xenosaga and Xenosaga Part 2 and everything. Like as a kid, before my imagination was forever tainted by whatever, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> as a kid, that was like, this is fucking crazy! So we beat him. We did it. We might be able to get out of this. We might be able to get out of this, no problem, but something's wrong. The engine should have fallen out. <laughs> That's such a great line. Here's your anime moment. The fart just staring with his mouth open, or his gear, whatever. Look at this shit. <clears throat> He's just fucking holding it in the air. That is such a strong, crazy fucking gear. We've seen this gear design, but we haven't seen the, the character design of the pilot yet, I don't think. Oh, well, well we kind of have, but we haven't seen the art for him or anything. Um, that's also the first time you hear him speak. Take it back. Um, but this character's kind of edgelordy, which for a 12, 13 year old who doesn't realize how dumb it is yet, he just threw his ship at him, which is fucking awesome. Um, when you're like 11, 12, 13 years old, you're like, oh, that's such a fucking cool guy, he's so strong. Oh, Goku. I don't know. Oh, I love how they can stand at that angle. I know it's just them changing the camera angle, but whatever. So, all of our well-laid plans, which, when you think about it, weren't that well-laid. Because uh, there was no reconnaissance done outside of what we already knew when we did the whole little planning thing an episode or two ago. I think it was last episode. No, it was two episodes. It was episode nine. Um... Yeah, all our well-laid plans um, 
catastrophically failing. Now we're gonna sink to the bottom of the sea of sand and die forever. Forever. Not really. <sighs> Delicious. It's interesting that Sigurd addresses Satan like that because he's like, you're, you're, he says you're not even the same person even though he clearly is because he's still clearly working in and out of Solaris. I mean, he was just there a couple episodes ago. Um, and I don't know if that is Sigurd trying to put faith in his friend. And the fucking thing froze. Okay, we'll try this again here in a moment. Hey, everybody. So, let's see. This Hopefully this will work this time. If not, we'll keep going. We'll, we'll figure it out. Because, oh boy, is that going to be annoying for the viewer. But there will only be one cut, so... For you guys, this might take me a million tries. Alright, it seems to be working this time. This old CD just doesn't want to play video like it used to. Hey, it worked okay. Sigurd. He's like 90% sure all his friends just died. So, you know, you got that going on. So this is cool. I think it's the exact same JPEG as before from Dazil, except with like, like now you can see a little bit more to the left or right. There's this big thing over here. I wonder what that is. Oh shit. It's that thing with Vandercom in it that had the power. Also what's interesting is that that thing was able to, it flew so high in the air that it was able to drift past the DMZ between uh, Ave and Kislev. Yeah, no kidding. So this, this is one of the big places where you're supposed to really start being able to put the pieces together of who that big red gear is and who it belongs to. Um, and I will not, whoop, let's see, 1405, 1405, 1416. Here's where I want to say, okay. Um, and I'm not going to spell it out explicitly. Um, you guys probably already know what's going on. If you... Of course I want to continue the stupid game. It's nice that they give you like a pause. Um, yeah, I'm not going to spell it out explicitly. Uh, hopefully you guys are all smart enough to be able to figure it out. I mean, I know you can just Google it. You, you're, you're literally three clicks away and a little bit of typing. From figuring out exactly what's going on but um, if you haven't figured it out yet and you're still watching this I would recommend that you don't look it up and just wait to see because uh, the plot twist is kind of neat so now new character new place it looks like the uniforms from uh... this guy's a fucking elf look at his ears Looks like the uniforms from the eggs are cell. <clears throat> I 
Also, why does this guy have this giant organ in this room to himself where no one can hear it? I want to know why the generators are called slave generators. Actually, that's explained later, and it's a very specific reason. Oh, excuse me. Coffee's getting to me this morning. <clears throat> so this guy's reaction, the Sigmund guy's reaction to what his... Uh, this general or whoever is telling him. <coughs> I know it says associate, but he's clearly a military dude. I mean, look at the uniform. So they caught an unconscious pilot. It's probably Faye, yeah? So this part's really cool to me um, because it completely resets almost everything that's going on in order to completely introduce a new area with like kind of a blank slate <clears throat> and introduce a whole new cast of characters. Not new, but like part of the main cast of characters, but introducing them in a different way. Because you get a lot of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You get a lot of JRPGs where it's just like, we met another friend who's going to join our party, but you're not going to fuck with them because... because you still have the same old guys that you've been building up and blah blah blah. Um, I know that happened to me a lot in Final Fantasy VII. Um, which if you've checked out the streams, which there's archives on the channel, um, I do a lot of like power leveling off, uh, off camera. <laughs> so by the time I get a new person, even though they're supposed to be somewhat close to where we should be in level, I'm always like five levels above them or something. <sighs> so this is an interesting question because basically... All of Ave's forces are more or less destroyed. Between Fae and the Red Gear and all that other stuff. But this guy's reaction is like, fucking, are you stupid? We can't afford to miss this chance. This guy doesn't explain it well, and I think it has something to do with the translation and the fact that they only have, you know, three of those text blocks to really do the explanation. But um, he's right. Without a main military force, what would happen is they would basically steamroll right into Bledovic, and then they would be stuck in an insurgency um, guerrilla war on one side with the remainder of Ave's forces, and then they would be dealing with the full military might of Solaris on the other side. Um, who at this point, it seems that their main military objective is to keep the war going. Um, so they would install another figurehead and the figurehead, I mean, you, you know, like when countries, when there are coup d'etats in the real world here, the, the, you know, half the time the leader is in, like, France and spends the rest of his life in France talking about how shitty the new uh, regime is. And normally the regimes are brutal enough to kind of quell a lot of resistance. However, um, I feel like there would be a serious uh, uh, guerrilla element uh, to basically an old monarchy being run by a prime minister having, you know, another figurehead somewhere else saying, keep fighting. <sighs> so here's more and more and more new characters in a new place. And if you haven't figured it out yet, this is um, Kislev. Um, 
it, they look very technologically advanced. I mean, if you look at their, except for that weird fishbowl thing, if you look at what we've seen so far, it's all been like what the inside of a battleship would look like. Um, and you'll find it out a little bit more as we go on, but that's kind of what the whole capital looks like. And it's really cool. Also, you get another masked character pulling the strings behind the scenes. <coughs> ah, excuse me. And what's interesting is that, like, who, where are these people from? Is it another country hiding in the skies or in the shadows or something or is it another shadow organization um, and it's not explained until much later so these people are clearly pulling the strings because they want Faye transferred to something called D-Block, which we will find out about very shortly. Um, and this is my favorite part of the game. One, because of the the jarring um, like reset to everything. Um, to the, the area we're in as one of the more visually and I guess geographically interesting areas in the game. Um... What the fuck is this shit right here? Um, the story beats that happen in this part of the game are really, really fucking cool. And there's a whole new game mechanic that's introduced that only happens here that's really, really, really fucking cool. And I'll talk more about that later. Um, but as it stands, here's Faye in front of this pendant... Um, for those eagle-eyed viewers, that pendant was um, uh, hanging around the Great Mother Sophia's neck um, in that photograph we saw. And now we're getting flashbacks to some place with the... Hey look, it's a young Fae and <clears throat> who I can only assume is his mother. God, I'm just dying. I don't my recording today. It's gross. I apologize. <clears throat> so this all seems like it would be symbolism in a flashback, but as you can see from the, the grain and everything, this is like a memory on repeat. Um, and this becomes important much later. Like... 30 hours? 20, 20, 30 hours from now? Becomes important much later. <clears throat> Excuse me. God, I'm dying. Ugh. Super duper dying. So this is weird, right? This is clearly more than just a dream. Where am I? Oh shit. Shouldn't be here. What a weird thing, huh? Yeah, we're in some kind of a barracks. Just woke up. Where am I? You've been unconscious for four days. Shit. All of these are important questions. And clearly you're all super duper fucked up. I am Doctor. You are in Nortun, Imperial capital of Kislev. I know Kislev and Ave are months in the Jewish calendar. Um, I don't know about uh, Nortun and Bledovic. Um 
But I know the major countries are at least named after months in the Jewish calendar. Pension area for criminals. I'm a criminal. And a living quarters for prisoners in D-Block. Under the heavy guard of the Kislev army, you are no ordinary criminal. Yeah, no shit. They picked me up in the middle of a ruined Ave fleet. Apparently. Oh shit, people. Prince Charming has woke up. They're gonna baptize me. Slap a Brazzers logo right on this. This isn't gonna get weird or anything. Actually, most of them are dudes. What's the gay version of Brazzers? Brazzers? I don't know. Fuck it. Um, so poor Faye just woke up and all this shit's going on and he's just, you know... This would not be a nice way to <clears throat> wake up having your entire world basically changed around you. Not just physically, but like... He has a good idea that his friends over at the Yggdrasil are probably totally dead. I can't go against the butlers. I know it's battlers, but I'm an idiot. That saves us a bit of trouble. The camera angles in this area here are weird. And I think part of it is specifically to be disorienting. Um, because... Faye is supposed to be disoriented at this point. The way the camera's swinging around is different from most of the other scenes in this game. I think the idea is it's supposed to give you an idea that you're not in control at this point. Hey, it's Champ. Look at this orc. Look at this fucking, like, just an orc. For realsies. So this guy's got a nice little house here. It's Rico! Rico Suave! More like Rico Orque. It's good to have guts if it's the real thing. This is a very interesting um, part of the game. It's a very interesting way to um, start this because you wake up completely disoriented. You're immediately brought into this situation where you're going to have to defend yourself and you can fail at any time. <clears throat> There's no game over for failing. Um, also, look at this area. This area looks really fucking cool. Um, but we're about to have to basically fight through a small gauntlet here. And you can fail on the first guy. And there's no game over for that. Um, and so I really like this because it kind of gauges how well you've done up to this point. Um, yeah. So we just have to fight these guys to determine our rank, which is why you can get a game over. If you get a game over, like, or not a game over, which is why you can't get a game over. If you die on the first guy, you get the lowest rank, and the further you go in the gauntlet, the better rank you get. Um, which has somewhat tangible benefits within the game, but is more interesting because it's literally just like, how have you done up to this point in the game? Which for us is, you know, what, 10 hours in? 10 and a half-ish hours? Um, which I think is super fucking cool. And it's a, it's a great way to kind of set yourself up for this next area here. Because if you can get through the whole gauntlet, you get some really interesting stuff. Um, and it changes the story around a teensy-weensy bit. Although, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> even if you fail, you're given an opportunity to try again. Um, I could be wrong about that. 
because it's been a, over a decade since I played... Eh, it's been less than a decade. It's been over a decade since I've gotten this far in the game. Alright, 1453, there we go. Um... Because I feel like they kind of seed it so that you have an opportunity to... Do okay, you know what I mean? Champ, he's ready for his baptism. Here's the Brazzers logo. Let it begin. Your first opponent will be Leonardo. This one guy's named Leonardo. The names aren't what you think they are after that, but they should have all been named after the fucking Ninja Turtles. That would have been awesome. So the first guy or two are kind of pushovers. Like, as you can see, they can do a little bit of damage, but nothing one or two heals can't fix. And at this point, it's just smash them with death blows till they die. I might switch it up a little bit for the other fights, but... Once you can get an okay amount of experience the higher up in the guys you go. This is also a cool way to establish Faye as a character, because he literally just woke up. He's injured. He's disoriented. He's all kinds of fucked up. And yet, he's still able to beat the shit out of a number of supposedly very strong dudes. Which, unfortunately, right now, damn, um, have look the same and have the same-ish animations. It's not all the same. Um, yeah, you're dead. There we go. Yeah, the first two guys are kind of pushovers. Um, the fourth person is a unique model that's really, really, really fucking cool, and I don't think you see ever again in the game. Um, and I don't know if it's a character that's referencing something else. Ah, damn, I don't have the Square Triangle X combo yet. I think I'm just waiting for the levels to get it, but no big deal. I should be able to get this guy in, too. What I'm gonna do first here... Oh, wow, he got me twice. Was the first one a... The first one might have been a counter. So, let's do a quick... Heals. That should be enough to get me up to full. Take one hit from this guy. Oh boy. Six damage. Oh no. And the reason I'm healing is for the next character, the unique one. Uh, that looks fucking cool. Um, I'm gonna actually change my tactics around a little bit for that one. Alright. So we got through three of them, no problem. No one's defeated Vargas since Suzern. Think you can win? Hell yeah. So look at this fucking model here. How cool is that? Alright. So the first thing she usually does is steals all your uh, ether points. So I want to use that before she gets over here and does it. Yep, there they go. Uh, so I'm glad that I got that attack up first. That added, like, an extra 100 damage. Look at how much damage she does. She's supposed to be the wall. I'd, um... Have one Aquasol ass, good lord. Normally, when I'm playing this on my own, and I just have all the time in the world to just kind of... Oh... I can hopefully tank one more hit. Normally when I have all the time in the world, uh, and I can just grind out stuff while watching stuff- Oh, hey, that was- okay. Okay, maybe the experience wasn't that good. But you get a metal jacket for beating her, which is a, a good defensive item. Anyways, normally I'd be a couple levels higher, so I'd be able to tank, like, two of those. Um, there it was a little suspect, but I did a good job. Oh god, we get to fight 
Rico Suave. And Faye's like, nah, fuck this. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure for story purposes, you get a couple retries up to this point. Mm. Where, like, I think if you die, they're like, oh, is that the best you can do? Blah, 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 blah. And, they, and you, you get the opportunity to heal yourself and try again. Whew. But uh, clearly we didn't need that. Which is good. Um, because I think, yeah, if you start losing, you, you start going down in rank, or you start getting less of an opportunity to get rank. Oh god. Slap the Brazzers logo. It's happening. Is that the best you can do? He's wearing spandex and he just said words. Guga. So, this is a fight you can't win. Uh, I'll just let you all know that right now, so... Yeah. <laughs> He's just like... Got us in some crazy jujitsu headlock. This is actually a really, really interesting character because of the way he fights, and we'll see more of it later, but... He uses wrestling moves. All of his stuff is like power bombs and suplexes and clotheslines and... No kayfabe, though. Out of the way! So we're not supposed to know what the fuck that is, but it beat the crap out of Rico. There. The first person to ever injure him. Alright, so now we have a fight. Hmm. <clears throat> you know what? I'm gonna do a quick... EP, and then I'll heal. Like I said, we can't really... we can't win. Screw it. It's a very useful, um, ether skill to have at this point in the game. Hmm, nose, nose itch. So this guy's getting super pumped up. He's taking human growth hormone in front of us. Or orc growth hormone in front of us. Shut up. I don't know. Up. Oh. So, clearly pretty fucking strong, yeah? I didn't even get a chance to do anything. I just wasted a Rosasol. Oh well, shit happens, right guys? Oh god. My rank is ah. I didn't hear that. Hmm. Okay. Enough being distracted. <clears throat> Don't forget that one thing. Brazzers. I made that joke three times. It's not been funny any of the times. I am a sorry. Am I recording yet? Oh, sorry about the audio. There. Just had to check. I don't have all my stuff uncovered. I haven't done this in a little while, so I don't have it set up. What's that around your neck? In the same place, just a different room. He woke up from combat, just to get thrown into combat, just to get the shit kicked out of him. I mean, we don't... We know what happened to Faye, but we don't know what happened to Faye after we cut away at that one point. He's in a little bit of pain. You just got beaten up by Green Triple H, bro. Actually, Rico would probably be closer to Brock Lesnar, because I feel like Rico would be the type of idiot to have a big, dumb, stupid sword tattoo on his chest. So 
So, I'm now A rank. Um, you can get lower ranks. I might, you know what? I might be wrong about that. I'm 90% sure you can get other ranks. But, there are benefits to being A rank. Um, and I don't think there's a canon. The canon is probably that you get fucking A rank. Not that it matters because this is the only thing that exists in this entire IP. Besides a big Japanese lore book and a couple soundtrack versions. So there's a bomb around my neck, which I don't know what that's from, but that's totally a thing that happens. Civilians of D-Block, everybody has to wear them. So we're all bad motherfuckers. <laughs> no matter how much you struggle. Yeah, complete control, or complete lack of control of the camera and everything. Um, I didn't show it off, but when we were backed into that alleyway, when we were backed into that corner, we couldn't control the camera there either. But now, we can control the camera and look around. Um, I've talked to, talked to a lot of people through Reddit forums and whatever that hate this track. Because it's used for the sneaking track, but it's also used as the track that is the capital of uh, uh, of Nortune or the, the Nortune music um, <clears throat> okay so we've got a doctor over here I think it's been a little while yep just a shower that's out of order <clears throat> permanently so clearly Prisoners are just kind of dumped in these slums, and there's, like, stuff associated with that. Also, best character model in the game. Look, you can see their cleavage on their butts. I'm looking at your butt. Hey, 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 show me your butt. Actually, this is kind of neat. Um... differs with the individual, but they are said to bring about remarkable effects. So there's, this is a cafeteria, and there's actually something really cool, uh, which is you get um, status effects from this food. So they have daily specials and dishes based on your rank, and since I'm rank A, I'm going to eat that. Bathland steak. Pretty sure it increases my strength temporarily. Um, I could be wrong about all of this, I just remember that. Let's see how it tastes. So he doesn't even go sit down, he just jams the whole steak in his mouth. That's funny. Uh, here's the dishes all la ranked too. Stamina up in fried Gruger, special of the day, mighty might. Alright, so let's head out and check out this world here. What do you have to say? I don't have much strength, but I know I won't lose to anyone in the manual dexterity department. What does that mean? Fixing the roof. Pays almost as well as working the sewers. Talk to the people up here. And the person up here. Only the operations manager is allowed here. Not written anywhere. <laughs> he just shrugs. He's like, eh, fuck it. I didn't know. You asshole old man. So we still don't really have any information on what's going on around here. We just know where we are and kind of what the deal is. But you're kind of left open-ended to explore at this point, which is pretty neat. If I came up here for a specific reason, and it's pretty cool. <clears throat> Look at this super neat, weird rail train. It's weird. It's neat. Whatever. I like it.
You saw them down on the bottom right there, and we'll see more of them later, but there's guards walking around. They're, they're just, they look like they're wearing bondage gear and spandex. Pretty funny. There's no one to manage, it's perfectly automated. That's cool. That's fine, you're getting paid to hang out. What a deep question, Faye. If it detects a heat source, it'll shut the whole thing down to prevent any accidents. It's kind of smart, yeah. Alright. Done that. Oh. There's a hole in the ceiling here. wonder where that goes. This is the entrance to the Kistle of Sewers. There's a ton of monsters down there, so don't go unless you're good. Those stupid battlers and bounty hunters are always coming and going. So, one of the ways, and it'll be explained later, uh, but one of the ways to make money here for prisoners is to go into the sewers and kill monsters and sell their parts. Um, you can bet your ass uh, that I'll be doing some leveling off screen here down there, grinding for parts and for cash. Um, and for levels, because I'm pretty sure my death blows are up all the way. I just walked over there because, you know, it's funny to me. Okay, so let's go over here. This is where we got fucked up. The save point's gone. Let's go down here and check out some more stuff. There's a couple places that are kind of important. This is not one of them. build it in the prison block. Doesn't look like these houses were built. It looks like everything was kind of built on top of itself. It's a really, I think, a cool slums area. I want to talk to this kid that's living with prisoners. Yeah, that makes sense. I wouldn't let a child out of the house in a prison town either. Aw, the kid just wants to play. Alright. It's the first and last time we'll ever go in this house. What's down here? It is the church, I think. Yep. What you got going on? It's a Nissan sect. You guys know anything about maybe the crown prince of Ave being destroyed in a battle in the desert like half a week ago? So that's that. I don't think there's anything worth grabbing in here. No like item boxes or anything like that. No treasure. Go in here. So this is a big half loop. This is a big half loop. Let's talk to her. Look, it's a named NPC. Named Latina. Oh shit! Look at this dog. Actually, he probably looks kind of more like an otter. But let's go talk to this asshole. They call me Hammer. Slap a Brazzers logo right on this. I bet you supply stuff. Bestiality porn. What? <laughs> I'm an ass. I'm an idiot. It's been such a long time since such a powerful criminal has been seen here. So I showed up and I'm the talk of the town, basically. This guy keeps calling people bro. A dumb thing I might have picked up a bit too much as a kid, and now going around calling people bro. I don't like the character. Also, he's got a cool pair of glasses on there. Interesting, I should say. Face just like, fuck it, fuck you, whatever. Continue to call you bro. By the way, bro. Not many get rank A, bro. So I feel like the normal player, or the person who's played this for the first time, um, at this point, are sitting here desperately wanting to find out, and upset about the fact that they don't know what's going on with Bart, and, uh, Satan, and Ziggard, and Ave. We're just here, and we're stuck here, and we're stuck having to deal with it. And I think that's pretty cool. Um... 
because you're left with it. You're left with these questions until they don't really become questions anymore and you're just kind of pissed off about everything. Um, I had to talk to him again. I knew I had to. Um, and by the time the questions are finally answered, you're like, yeah! No, not really. Hmm, that's strange. Actually, no, I do want to talk to you. And I picked the wrong thing, because I was sitting here looking at the waveform for no real reason. Yes, come to think of it, there is something missing. Item shops, yep. So there's no item shops or weapon shops. However... What did I come here for? I came here for a thing. I'm gonna grab some of these. I don't really need them, and I don't really use them. I, I use them. We've got all that stuff. I wanted to buy Aquasol S, but we don't have it here. Alright, now we're gonna check out... So this guy's kind of a mobile shop. He'll be going around shopping for us or whatever. Anyway, so I wanted to talk to him. Hey, look! It's Rico's room. It's locked. He's just locked himself in there. There's, I think there's like one thing to look at around here. It might be over in the other room, the locked room. I'm pretty sure it is. Anyways, let's keep on keeping on. Bye, Latina. Well, bang, okay. Kiddos. Goat's horn, east and west, the ruling god's throne, the one possessing the red seal. Here and there, digging up treasures of the past, or so they say. It's the song I wrote. It's about the B Info store. We sell machine parts for gears from ruins all over the world. So this is a gear shop, surprisingly. Why would we need a gear shop here? I think you earned your keep. Anyways, let's see what you have got to exchange. Oops. Clicked it a bit too fast. Let's go back in. So this is where you would exchange the stuff you get out of the sewers for cash. And instead of just a buy and sell menu, they restrict how you access it by just giving you this. Clearly you want to score eyeballs and scales, but I don't have anything. And I don't have a gear at this point. I'm just a prisoner. So the info center, what do you want to know? Exchangeable items, how to exchange, so it just kind of gives you an idea what to do here. And I believe it's this chick here that sells gear stuff. Battle Egg, that's what Nocturne is famous for. So, there's a point where it seems that prisoners are able to get gear. Gears, there we go. Come back when you become a battler. Hey, you. You look alright. I don't know, 2700 gi. G. Gold. Gil. Gold. There's no gil in this game. Gold isn't bad. So you get this thing called hobmeat that you can't exchange, interestingly enough. Whatever. So that's what's going on here. Let's uh, keep exploring and see what's going on. Things posted up on the walls like that on the wall. They have some stuff written on them. There are lots more than that one, too. I would have never even thought to look at the wall. Information on finding items, trouble, we can blah blah blah, go to Latina's bar, legal or other, anything's okay. <laughs> We're down to sell and trade in illegal shit. Oh god! So you're the new guy, the Imperial Committee is looking for you. They've heard something about you and the Champs men, they should still be somewhere in the D block. They decided to visit you. So, events are in motion already, and people are already interested in me, and my massive, throbbing fighting. So the idea is, is you're supposed to explore around and just go straight for the exit, um, and then come here later. Actually, no, you have to meet Hammer, then you go to the front. And that that's the way the triggers are set up. Then you come back here. Dumb subordinates. So 
why I didn't want to come with men. It must be warm here for half the women to be walking around and barely covering like bondage gear. They want to give me a gear and have me fight. Yeah, boy. Hashtag. Battling. It's a recreational sport. That's kind of neat. So that's the mechanic I was talking about, and we won't be getting to it in this episode. But we will be getting to it eventually. So the fact that I was able to actually injure the champ is more important than the fact to these people than the fact that I have rank A. Because there's other people that have rank A. Like, no kidding. Um, but like, holy shit. Also, here's Faye being fucking Faye again. What also is interesting about Faye's reaction here is he's like, I don't like gears. He's he's so shell shocked by the fact that he's in this new area that he's kind of regressing into his like, it has nothing to do with me. Blah blah blah. I don't want to fight. Um. Which is stupid, because he doesn't know what the fuck happened to his friends. He needs to go figure out what's going on with that. And yet instead, here he is like, I'm just gonna be a prisoner here. Like, his lack of motivations are weird here. Like, up to this point in the story, you've noticed that there's very few times where he actually has any agency in the story. Like, there's very few times. One is when he finally decides to fight with Bart um, in the hideout. And it's only because they're, like, trying to kill kids, more or less. Yo, it's Hammer. Um, another time is when he jumps up to help Ellie in the forest. There's very few times. Like, Faye without somebody to guide him is just kind of like, I'm just going to be here and do things. Um, which might be, you know, more or less what his character is designed around, but I I don't like it. I don't like it as a character. I don't like someone who can't motivate themselves. I think that's the old military in me. So yeah, everybody's kind of... Not everybody at this point, it's just Hammer, but Hammer's looking at Faye like, dude, you're a fucking idiot. For not trying to move up in the world. And Faye's just like, Nah, I don't care, man. Nah. nah. I want melancholy. You can live in luxury. Power is everything here. The powerless, the weak are just depressed. Give it a try. Faye is like, Nope. I don't care about anything. I'm just a fucking idiot child. He really is just a fucking idiot child. He's, like, disgusted that Hammer would even suggest that he try to improve his lot in life. What a shitty character you are, Faye. Yeah, I kind of totally agree with you, Hammer. He's being a complete mouth-breathing idiot. Alright, I don't remember exactly what I have to do here. I think I might just have to go to sleep. The main town, debuff prisoners like yourself can't pass. So we can't even leave this screen, basically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my happy ass back over here and pass out. Oh shit. He made it all the way around town before we were able to make it in here. The new doctor has just arrived. You're supposed to have been at the bar. He, like, he got around town faster than we did getting through that door. Ugh, shouldn't worry about such little details. So we want to go meet the new doctor.
Aw, but I like lady doctors. They can check my temperature. Ha ha ha, Brazzers. I'm sorry. This is the bad Brazzers episode of Xenogears. This is kind of funny. I like this. If I become chums with him, I can expand my connections by establishing black market medical treatment routes. I want to sell drugs, bro. And he's just like, oh, Hammer, you want to be a drug lord. Ha 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 ha. Whatever. Let's go say hi to the doc. There we go. I wasn't controlling that. Otherwise, I would have run. And we walk in. And ta da! The dock is a chair. No, I'm kidding. Nobody's here! He should be here. God damn it. Heh. <laughs> also, Faye, for being disgusted with Hammer literally one minute ago, is like super chummy with him now. Oh, it's just Doc. <laughs> and Doc's just like, yeah, I can kind of do whatever I want in this world. Yeah. So, you know. Whatever. Yeah, I know this Doc. So Satan immediately like, what the fuck are you doing about this? And Faye's just like, I'm just, I don't want to do anything. Because I'm a fucking idiot, mouth-breathing child. <laughs> Seriously, look at this. Faye can't do anything at this point unless he's guided by somebody. So Satan shows up and kicks him in the fucking ass and it's like, what are you fuck? what are you trying, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're being an idiot. It's seriously a good question to ask Faye. Because it's like, what are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do? And Satan's like, you're a fucking idiot, dude. You're an idiot. I did promise that, didn't I? Like, not even a thought in his head of, oh, I wonder what happened since I've been out for half a week and stuck in this prison on the other end of the continent. So everybody's dying in quicksand, basically. I jumped in the escape pod. You kind of forced in there. Not forced, but you made the right decision to not go down with the ship. And as bad as the people in the Yggdrasil have it, Bart has it even worse because he's stuck in this tiny little gear cockpit underneath the Yggdrasil at the bottom of a sea of quicksand. Which is fucking brutal. That is, that would not be a fun way to go. Be like stuck in a coffin. Without the ability to one inch punch your way out. So, I can kind of see why Faye is the way he is right now. Because he was so shaken by watching people... Like, watching his allies die and Graf showing up, which is clearly a trigger for him. That he's just kind of shell-shocked. But, like, it's still ridiculous that it takes Satan showing up and giving him a swift verbal kick in the ass to really kind of even ask questions about his situation. I... I don't know if it's an issue with the translation, or if it's just the way the character is written, and the translation is okay, but, like, it's baffling to me. Because Faye is acting so apathetic about anything other than his own involvement in fighting, up to the point of Satan showing up and saying, don't you have other obligations and other things that motivate you? So Faye at this point knows he blacked out and did something crazy. So we know, he knows, 
Every, like everybody knows. Everybody who's been involved with it. And the question is what? When did we stop seeing Faye and when did something crazy happen? Hmm, I wonder. And now he just knows that Bart and them are alive, so he needs to escape. Good job, Faye. You came up with this all on your own. You're the smart one. The fact that Satan is here screaming at you, basically, has nothing to do with it. Oh man, this one's gonna run long today. You guys are in for a treat. Over an hour of content. Terrible, terrible content. I'm sorry. Oh well. The end of this conversation here would be a pretty, pretty decent place to end uh, the video. Because... Actually, yeah, this will end up turning out to be a good video because even though it'll be running long, it'll set the stage for everything. It's the end of one story and the beginning of another, kind of. Alright, we're going to do a fun thing here. We're going to do a fun thing here. as part of the end of the video. So let's rip these bombs off of our necks. It'll probably be fine. Hope you're all prepared. Oh yeah, just rip the bomb off of my neck. No, I don't care. I'm Faye. I'm a fucking mouth-breathing idiot. So, you know, just... whatever. Let's do it. Do it now! Rip this thing off of me. I wonder how... What's the word I'm looking for? I wonder, like, how explosive these collars are. Because there wouldn't have to be much of an explosion to just completely sever your head. But... The way this, uh... The way it zooms out, it's like we blew up the entire room. We died, game over, that's the end of Xenogears. Nope, just kidding. Ha 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 ha. Also, that was my daughter not listening to me. She has the day off, so she's hanging out. Whatever. What the hell happened? Scared the heck out of me, suddenly shouting like that. <laughs> it's like we had a premonition. <laughs> uh, I like that part, it's pretty funny. We have not explored all other possibilities. So there's really only one way to get these off, and Hammer's about to say it. So, you basically have to win the battling. So yeah, that's kind of, yeah. The Kaiser himself! <laughs> so they're just like, oh, you were a prisoner? You raped and ate thousands of children, but you won a tournament, so you can be an officer in the army. <laughs> Eh, it's fine. There used to be programs like that in the United States. I don't think it exists anymore, but a back in the day, I know a judge, I think it was when the draft existed, a judge could compel you to um, do military service as a sentence if you were committed of a crime. Um, which, as far as I know, when you chose that as your sentence or as your punishment, I mean, you were just kind of in the military at that point. Um, so you could get promoted as normally. At least that's how I remember it being, from what I'd read up on it back in the day. So now, we're setting the stage for what's going to be the next... Uh, probably three to six episodes of this. It's my favorite little section of the game for a lot of reasons.
Now we're talking about how strong he is, even though they've shown us through combat. And I like that they did that twice within this time span of about 20 minutes functionally for us. Because first we got our, our shit kicked in, or Bark did, by that red gear that just completely decimated him. Mm, excuse me. Um, and then it happens immediately again with Rico. And now, instead of showing us Rico picking up like a dropship and throwing it at us, they're just saying that he's undefeated. He, he's, he's the Mike Tyson. Tyke Myson, I don't know. Am I going to get sued for saying Mike Tyson in a video? Probably. Look okay, at That's the end of the channel forever. God, this is fucking dragging. Hope y'all are sticking with me. I'm sorry. I try to keep these nice and tight. Tight like a toyga. This is also interesting backstory on Rico because they're like, he's this crazy badass. He's won a pardon, but he's still got a bomb around his neck and he's still just hanging out in the prison for some reason. And now Faye has found his motivation. Apparently his motivation is his gay lover, Doc Saiten. Sitan. Whatever. Shut up. So this makes Hammer excited. At least he's frank. He's like, no, I don't think I can win, but I gotta do something. Which is completely, like, over the course of five minutes, his motivation has completely changed. Alright. So we're about finally done with this fucking mess. Come on. Yeah. Whether you're forced to or not, you did not want to do this, right? Fight with gears, I mean. God damn it. There are there are no other ways to get out of here. At least not for us. I'm sure there are most likely other ways to get out of here. Faye's like, I go all schizo, bro! Connection with some lost part of me. You never decided that. You decided that in the past three minutes, you fucking idiot. Oh, I hate this fucking character. I hate it! Because, like, he was presented with the exact same scenario earlier by not Doc. And he was just like, no, nope, no, fuck it. And now he's like, no, I decided that I want to do this. No, you didn't, bro. Doc came along and manipulated your ass. Alright, so... Clearly this isn't ending, but that's the end of that. So, we're gonna end it here with this weird shit. And this will be where we pick up next episode. So thanks for coming out and watching the video, guys. If you liked it, you should subscribe. Uh, these come out every other week. Uh, if you know anybody else who's interested in Xenogears, you should definitely share it. I've shared it a couple times in the Xenogears subreddit over on Reddit. But um, if somebody else did, I'm sure I'd get even more attention. Either way, thanks for coming out. We'll see you guys next time.